Hello everybody, Chris here, and in this video I want to show you guys DaVinci Resolve 14 and give you five really good reasons why you should be using DaVinci Resolve 14 over other video editors that are out there on the market right now. So looking through this app, which you can see on screen at the moment, um, you would think that this would be a paid app. And yes, DaVinci Resolve does have a premium version for professionals, but what I'm using right now is actually the free version of DaVinci Resolve 14. Um, which you can use to make YouTube videos, whatever. There's no watermark or anything like that. This is actually free at the moment. Uh, everything you see on screen, all of the video transitions, um, the different options that are available to you, the ability to add in titles. Yes, if you upgrade, the, the premium version will have extra features on top of that, but I haven't actually needed them. So you can get a lot of power out of this application, which is free. So reason number two that I want to talk about today is that DaVinci Resolve 14 is cross-platform and not just on Windows and Mac, but also on Linux. So if you look at the Linux instructions, it's uh, basically written for OpenSUSE Linux, but I had it working on Manjaro Linux, which totally fine just a few days ago. I think I'll actually do a tutorial on how to get it set up on my Manjaro Linux because I want it to be easy to use for everybody. Um, so yeah, it's a, it's a tool you can use on all of the different systems. It looks almost exactly the same on whichever operating system you happen to be running it on. And it's a really solid tool on all of them. Um, as far as Linux goes, you don't really have a lot of good options for video editors. So things like Adobe Premiere or Sony Vegas, you really can't touch those without, I don't know, going out of your way to use something like Wine to um, have compatibility with Windows software because they haven't actually built those apps for Linux. Reason number three is that you can do increased speed playback where you can actually still understand uh, what the person in the video clip was actually saying. So if you set it to times two speed, there are some video editors where it becomes incomprehensible what's being said. So it makes it really hard to edit at times two speed. Uh, but in DaVinci Resolve, it's one of the better video editors when it comes to this, where you can actually easily understand what you were saying as long as it was reasonably clear when you were actually recording the video, or in other words, at times one speed. So here I'm gonna enable my sound for a second. And what I'm going to do is I'm just gonna play back part of the video clip so that you can hear how it sounds at times two speed and just let it talk for itself. Where all, where all the audio levels are at in the video, if they even have that feature of providing the audio levels. So here it makes it really easy to make a cut at the beginning of the video because I know I'm not talking for this course. So as you can see, hopefully it sounds really clear and uh, it's easy to edit at that kind of speed. And that's a big advantage because if you're actually editing your video um, and let's say you were recording for 40 minutes, you don't really want to be sitting there for 40 minutes just trying to hear everything again. If you can speed that up to times two speed, it can drastically increase the speed of your video editing process. So reason number four, it has responsive cutting and uh, doing things like ripple deletes, taking clips out. It's very easy. There's no lag when you do it inside of DaVinci Resolve. So here we have a clip and let's just say that we didn't want it at all. So we have a tool over here called the Razor Edit Mode. We can either click on it or we can hit B on our keyboard. And then we can take any clip just find the time where we want to cut it up. Um, left click instantly creates a, a basically a separation. So now it's two clips. You can keep doing that. As you can see, there's not really any lag. Um, and I'm not running a monster machine. I'm just running eight gigs of RAM. It's nothing impressive. So now let's say that we want to take one of these clips out. So I can select it and just do a control X. Okay, it's gone completely. But let's say you actually want to do what's called a ripple delete, which is where uh, you have video clips and when you remove them, you want everything to the right to move over to the left in order to make sure that the clips on the left and the right um, can continuously go into each other without having to drag clips around manually. So if I right click on this area here, I can choose ripple delete or I can hit shift backspace on the keyboard and that's going to instantly shift over everything to the right over. Likewise, you can delete and um, basically ripple the clips on the right over at the same time, right clicking on the clips we want to get rid of, ripple delete, and they're gone. Now the fact that it's not only easy to do this, but that you do it without any lag is a big deal because making cuts 
is a lot of what video editing is actually about. Okay, so reason number five, and this is another thing where it's pretty much everybody who edits a video is going to need to do, it's easy to add in basic transitions inside of DaVinci Resolve. So let's zoom in a bit here so that we can see what we're doing. Um, and when you want to add in a basic transition, or in other words, a cross dissolve between two clips, you got to hover over the border of those two clips. Now, depending on where you want the dissolve to go, you can either hover over the left side, hover over the right, or what you want in most cases, is to hover over in between so that when you add in a dissolve or a video transition, it's going to be half on both sides of both clips. So I can right click that and instantly go to add 30 frame cross dissolve. And now I have a fade effect going between the left clip and the right clip. Great. So if we want to get rid of that effect now, we can just left click on the transition because it's a separate element from the clip itself. Hit delete on the keyboard. Um, now over in the toolbox, currently on the top left for me, uh, we have video transitions. So if we want to add in any other type of transition, um, let's just try this heart thing out there. You just drag it onto the clip. Uh, as you can see, depending on where you're dropping it, it's going to kind of position it accordingly. So in most cases, once again, you probably want it over half of both clips. So I'm going to drag it there. Um, if you want to lengthen it, you can just click on the left or right bounds and drag it until it's the right length you want. And now if we want to test that transition we just added, once again, you can just position where you want on the clip. You go ahead and hit space and it's going to play back in the preview window. So while other video editors are going to have similar elements to what you see here, the fact that it all comes together as a package where it's not only easy to use and responsive, but also free and cross-platform, including Linux operating systems, in my opinion, makes DaVinci Resolve the best video editor going into 2018. So thanks for watching this video. I hope you guys go ahead and give it a shot. And if you want to see a more complete tutorial from me on how to use DaVinci Resolve, I have a link down below in the description. So thanks for watching, and I will see you guys in my future video content.